Hello, I'm Mike Haynes of Pro Irrigation Training and All Green Irrigation of Columbia, South Carolina. And I'd like to thank you for taking a couple of minutes of your time to stop by my blog and consider with me the question of when is the best time of day to run your sprinkler system? It's a question I get asked very frequently out in the field and it's a mistake I see being made quite frequently as I drive around every day going from appointment to appointment. You know, I may see at least a dozen systems or more that are running in the dead heat of the day say 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and I don't think that's a great thing and that's one of the reasons I've put together this blog post here is to discuss the issue and hopefully convince you that there's a better time of day to do this and in my humble opinion the best time of day is in the pre-dawn hours of 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. now we've got a couple things going for us during that period of time and obviously the sun isn't up yet and evaporation hasn't really started at its uh, fullest um, there may be a higher humidity in the air at that time which reduces evaporation as well and also the wind is less likely to be blowing during that period of time which you know those are the two things that we really have as enemies of our water efficiency and that's evaporation and wind blowing our water off of its intended target. Now why is watering during the day such a bad thing? Well it's really a question of efficiency and if you're running your system all the time at a lower efficiency rate, you may be harming your plants or at the very least holding them back from being everything that they could be. Now there's been a couple of university level studies done on the issue um, and you can find some of these in Turf Magazine or do a Google search. There's plenty of things being said out there about this and pretty unanimously the conclusion that they've reached that if you're watering any time you know between 10 a.m. and 5 or 6 p.m. in the afternoon you may be getting as little as 10 percent efficiency on your water. Now we've got some things going against us in our irrigation systems and we're going to be talking about turf rotors and these are the type of uh, sprinkler heads that oscillate back and forth spraying uh, their stream out maybe 30 or 40 feet. Um, and we're going to talk about a theoretical zone here and we're going to get technical for just a second and hopefully I'll convince you why you should be trying to get the most efficiency that you possibly can. Now the goal of what we're trying to do when we run our irrigation system is we're trying to get our water to soak into the ground to the roots. Turf grasses and other shrubs, ornamental plants and so forth will generally take in less than 5% of their total water intake through their leaves or blades of grass. So that means we really have to concern ourselves with what's happening in the ground at the root zone. Okay, now roots will not grow into dry ground. So what we're trying to do is get our water to soak down past the existing root zone. Really our target is somewhere around six inches down into the ground, which will motivate the roots to follow that water down into the ground and grow deeper roots. Now that's providing that its other needs are being met, sunlight, nutrients and water um, and so forth, oxygen getting down to the root zone as well. Uh, but we'll discuss that in a different blog post. But we will be talking about some of the specifics of why we should be watering at a better time of the day and what's going to be happening. So let's take a look at a graphic here of uh, a theoretical commercial zone of turf rotors covering an area that's 60 foot by 90 foot. Um, those, uh, each of those heads are spraying out 30 feet and this zone uses a total of 36 gallons per minute. So we're going to take a look here at our formula and this formula comes from the Irrigation Association and this formula is PR, our precipitation rate that we're after, equals 96.3 times Q divided by A. Now, the 96.3 is a conversion factor that gets us to our desired inches per hour that we're going to use to do our measurements with. And the Q is the total flow through that zone, which we identified as 36 gallons per minute. And the A is the total area that we're irrigating with this zone. Um, and that's 5,400 square feet. So if we go through this formula here, what we get is 0.64 inches per hour and we're going to consider a runtime of around 45 minutes. 
In our area here in South Carolina and the southeast, we've got a pretty high clay content to our soil, and sometimes it's a struggle even to get 45 minutes worth of water to soak into the ground just simply because the clay has a very reduced infiltration rate, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Now, what this uh, formula here gives us is a gross precipitation rate. And that is a measurement of how much water is actually leaving the sprinkler heads. Now, if we had a net precipitation rate, that would be a measurement of how much water is actually hitting, to the, hitting the ground and able to soak in. We can't really get that net figure because generally that requires a catch can audit, which is a series of open cans placed at specific intervals through the area. You run this system, measure the water in each of the cans, run it through a formula or two and arrive at the net precipitation rate. Now we're not going to be able to do that for our example here, but we are going to consider if we were getting a hundred percent efficiency with our water, which is really not possible, but we'll also you know, balance that against our worst case scenario of a 10 percent efficiency by watering in the middle of the day. So that should really give you a good example of what's happening when you water in the middle of the day and why it would be better to move that to a better time. So if we're only going to use a 45 minute run time, you know, our formula gave us 0.64 inches per hour. Now if we only use in 45 minutes of that, we're going to get around a half inch of water. Now how far is that going to soak down into the ground? It really depends on the type of soil that you have. If we look at one end of the spectrum, a sandy soil, that half inch of water is actually going to soak down the six inches that we need it to at 100% efficiency. Like I mentioned before, that's nearly impossible. Our turf rotors may only be getting 55 to 60% efficiency at best, um, but at 100% we would get that six inches, but if you're running your system in the middle of the day and getting 10% efficiency, that gives you 0.6 inches of soaking down into the ground less than an inch. Not good. But what if you're on the other end of the spectrum with a clay soil? That half inch of water may only soak down two inches into the ground at 100% efficiency. And if you're only getting 10% efficiency, that's 0.2 inches which is pretty worthless. And when we look at the whiteboard here in a second, I'm going to show you as to what that looks like as far as the soaking and what it might do to the roots. Now, let's take a look at a shot that I've taken here of a whiteboard and I've done basically a crude drawing of uh, the root zone, the soil profile uh, in a th our theor theoretical area here. And if you look down the left side of the picture, you'll see the measurements from zero down to six inches in the ground. And like I said before, that's really our goal about six inches because that's usually about how far a healthy turf grass will grow its roots. If you're really treating it properly, you'll see about a five or six inch depth in that. Whereas if you see a turf grass that's not healthy, it may have one to two inches of root depth at best. So what we're trying to do is get our roots to go down as deep as we can. Now if you look at the root zone on the left side of the picture, that's supposed to represent a healthy turf grass. It's got a nice deep root zone. Now when temperatures peak in the middle of the summer, that means that that grass is going to have a deeper well to draw water from because as the further you go down in the ground, the more that that clay is going to hold water, uh, the longer it's going to hold water. You know, like I said, you have a little deeper well to, to draw some water from when the times get critical in the middle of the summer when you may have an evapotranspiration rate of maybe six inches or more during July or August. And that's a lot of water to be evaporating and transpiring from the plants from the ground. So why do people water during the day? Now, some people really don't know why their landscaper has set the timer up to run like that. I, I know several landscapers that prefer to water uh, in the middle of the day, but the answer I get a lot when I ask people uh, why they water right in the middle of the day, it's because they've seen a golf course do it or maybe a sports field or something do it. 
Um, but let me just start off saying that your residential grass or commercial area, it isn't a sports field and it's not under the same wear and conditions that a golf course would be under. And probably what you're not seeing is the fact that that golf course is probably doing the vast majority of its watering in those pre-dawn hours like I've already suggested. And what they're doing is they're running those zones for maybe 10 or 15 minutes in the middle of the day, getting some water applied to the ground and getting an evaporative cooling effect off of that. That softens up the blades of grass and keeps them a little more supple so that people walking back and forth across them, a heavy use doesn't damage the grass. Now, if you're experiencing crunchy, dry grass in the middle of the day during the summer, it generally means that you're not watering it enough during the times that you should be watering. And if you're having to apply water in the middle of the day to combat that crunchiness, you're not really doing it right. And in fact, all you're doing is trying to alleviate a symptom rather than pursuing a fix for the real cause of why your grass gets crunchy. Because if you're using a turf grass or bushes, ornamental plants um, in their proper agricultural zone, meaning that they're relatively native to that area, they're going to be able to handle the heat of the day and you shouldn't have to treat them special by going out and applying a little water in the middle of the day. Your regular watering regimen in early morning hours every other day or every third day, however you've got it set up, that should do just fine on plants that are suited for their area. Now, what about watering at night? I know a lot of people that water in the evening when they get home from work. Sometimes people like to run their system if they've got those impact rotors that go ch -ch -ch -ch. You know, that kind of gives a nostalgic feeling of summer uh, and some people do that or they run their systems manually when they get home from work. But what happens then is that whatever water doesn't absorb into the ground just sits on the top of the ground all night long until the sun comes out in the morning and starts to evaporate it off. I mean, sun's going to evaporate off during the night, but the chances are if you do this consistently, you're going to give your grass a fungus or some mold or something like that on it. And some grass types are more susceptible to that than others, uh, but it's still not a great practice. Uh, I mean, if in a worst case scenario, that's the only thing that you could possibly do, but if your system has a timer and you can set up an automatic program, you shouldn't be watering in the late evening hours. Um, so, and we've also considered why not to water in the middle of the day and why those early morning hours are best. But are there any exceptions to this rule? Well, of course, there's exceptions to every rule. And if you've got new sod or new seed that's recently been applied, um, I would consult with your landscaper or the sod provider, the retailer, uh, as to their instructions. But usually what, they are going to, what they're going to instruct you to do is run your system maybe three times a day for maybe about half the time you normally do. And what you're trying to do is keep that seed or that sod at least moist all day long. Generally seed, if you get it wet and then let it completely dry out, it's going to start killing that seed and it's not going to germinate properly. And well, you know, with sod, if you let it dry out, it's definitely not going to put down the roots and it may even dry. Some varieties are worse than others and some you really have to put a lot of water down to keep that going. So that's a, a, an exception to the rule. And you really only want to water like that for two weeks, maybe three weeks tops. Okay, uh, and then go back to your regular watering regimen so that you can encourage root growth and give them that interval that they need of a wet dry cycle. Now, and the other exception is drip zones. Now, drip lines, drippers, uh, however you want to call it, those are okay to run uh, during the day or at least in the morning because you're getting a lot less evaporation from them. Those are a, a highly efficient way of doing your watering. And especially if you have a layer of mulch over top of those drip lines, then you're getting very little evaporation. And generally the way we'll set a system up, if we have a combination of turf rotors, pop-up sprays, and drip lines, we'll try to put that drip on the very last zone so if somehow that overlaps into the early morning sunlight hours, it's okay because we'll be getting a lot less evaporation off of that and hopefully the sheer efficiency that we're getting from that will overcome any evaporation that might be happening. So I hope this information is going to convince you to move your watering times back to 3 a.m. to 7 a.m and hopefully your landscape is going to thank you for it and also your wallet will thank you for it. 
and I appreciate your time again. And stop back by and check out some of our other blog posts at ProIrrigationTraining.com or AllGreenIrrigation.net. Thanks again.